Hello everybody and welcome to Clover HR's webinar on what is coaching. Today we'll be talking about coaching, a highly bespoke one-to-one -one talking therapy and coaching supports clients to build their skills and focus their mind to achieve their personal goals and overcome their difficulties. At the end of the session you'll have the opportunity to ask any questions that you might have and also we'll invite you to take part in a short survey. Hello everybody, my name is Kerry Cooper and I'm a coach and HR business partner within the Clover HR team. Today's webinar is brought to you by Clover Coaching, part of the Clover HR service offering. With nearly 20 years experience in HR and communications, I've seen how meaningful one-to-one -one conversations help managers and employees to be more focused on the job in hand, achieve their goals and be more engaged. Clover offers organisations coaching expertise, providing confidential one-to-one -one coaching sessions with employees or managers, either in person or on video call. So what is coaching? In its simplest terms, coaching is helping people identify and remove their blocks. So how do we do that? Well, Firstly, we're here for you and you matter. We do take a person-centered approach here at Clover throughout all of our services. And our services include HR business partnership, employability and coaching and mentoring. At Clover, we are trained coaches that use empathy, questioning and active listening, coaching, visualization, cognitive behavioral therapy, interventions and techniques to help the client uncover what the real issues, beliefs or fears are with which give strength to their block or blocks that our client is facing. So did you know that people management recently reported from their research that fear of failure is holding back two in five people in the workplace? So think about how your people and business productivity and profitability could be boosted if 40% of your people had coaching and they could overcome their blocks, i.e. their fears, and reach their high performance and best potential and feel happier in their lives. So within the coaching relationship, once we've identified the blocks that is preventing our client from doing or achieving what they want or need, we work together to create a plan with goals to overcome those blocks. And we work through a series of exercises together, set goals to help change unhelpful behaviours for the client. And the client has tools to use within their weekly sessions and also afterwards. So why should a person or organisation use coaching? So within organisations, we often experience managers and employees bearing problems that affect them personally and professionally, and this can affect their well-being and their performance at work. So feedback from clients that have had coaching suggested that these are the following benefits. The organisation and the person had improved performance and productivity, and that's because the person could focus more on the job in hand and felt like they'd removed their blocks or barriers so that they could perform and do their best and, and achieve their best potential. Clients have also reported that they deal better with their people issues when they bring coaching in. So for example, that might be a manager being coached to help them manage their team, or it might be coaching within an employee base where there are maybe conflicts or challenges. Another benefit of coaching is that it helps ensure legal compliance, particularly with, with people issues. So where we find people issues, we can also find potential employment law pitfalls, um, which can start to manifest in things like grievances and even allegations of bullying, harassment, etc. Um, and by having coaching and putting interventions into place, it helps ensure that any problems are dealt with properly and legally. Another benefit of coaching that our clients have found 
is that they help grow and support their employees, not only in the workplace, but with life's challenges. And one example of that is the challenges of COVID. So the pandemic has brought, as we know, new and different challenges to people and in the workplace too. And coaching has helped people who are currently on furlough leave cope with being on furlough leave and the uncertainty of whether they'll have a job to go back to or a business to go back to. And also we've had coaching with employees at risk of redundancy um, where they're feeling like they're struggling to, to um, have belief that they'll be able to perhaps find another job because of the current economic status. And we're also coaching clients who are getting back to business after COVID and the lockdown. And with the easing, they're getting back to normal in terms of bringing back the new processes that they need to do. And we're helping clients who are struggling with motivation and positivity um, because that's really needed when bouncing back from COVID-19. So those are some benefits that our clients have reported that co coaching has brought to them. So we've spoken about blocks and removing blocks. Coaching helps people remove blocks. And the most common blocks that we've identified when coaching people and coaching people in organisations are around these five different buckets. So um, the first one, dealing with difficult people, and this could be from a manager's point of view, it could be from a colleague point of view. Um, and that is preventing somebody from moving forward within their life and causing them stress or problems. And then another block is stress management. So somebody being stressed either personally or work related stress. And sometimes our clients struggling with stress, they just can't see the, the wood for the trees. They just, it's almost like they've just hit a brick wall um, and, they, and they don't know what to do. And it, it's, it's, it's really troubling for that individual and coaching really helps with that block. Um, Time management and procrastination is another common block. So this is where somebody is um, struggling to get started or struggling to finish tasks. And there's lots of different reasons for that. So we uncover the blocks or reasons for procrastinating and struggling to manage time in the best way. Perfectionism is another block. And this is where somebody holds extremely high standards, not just for themselves, but also for other people. And this can cause some resentment. This can actually also cause some time management and procrastination issues um, and other, um, other manifestations that really affect a, an individual. And um, the fifth most common issue we see is around self-belief and confidence issues. And this is where somebody feels blocked because they really just don't think that they can do what they're being asked to do. And we've actually seen this most often when somebody is transitioning their career. So starting a new job, starting a new pr promotion, for example. So we'll have a look at two of the blocks in more detail. And as we do so, have a think about in your business, is there somebody or people who potentially or even yourselves who can identify with these blocks and would benefit from coaching? So Let's look at procrastination. Why is procrastination a problem for your business? So it does cost time and money, and that's because you're paying a salary to a person to do a job. And when that person is procrastinating, and that's for many different reasons, um, and we can find out those reasons one-to-one -one with that person and talking to them confidentially so that they can open up and really discover why they're procrastinating. Um, once the person's um, able to overcome that, they're able to be fully productive. But if somebody is procrastinating and not actually getting the job done, then organisations are spending time and money on inaction. Something else that we've seen and that you can read about is around company culture. And company culture and procrastination it means that you can actually have an environment where it's not just one or two isolated cases of people who feel like they've got a block and they can't move forward and they're procrastinating. But because of the behaviors that procrastination actually displays, 
such as um, having long meetings that have no structure, such as um, 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 promising deadlines will be reached and they're not. And so there's a kind of a laissez-faire approach where um, managers and employees feel like they're not going to be held accountable to deadlines. It's just okay to extend them. Perhaps project teams are having status updates and they're not being done every, every um, session. Um, and it actually becomes cultural that people aren't being held accountable for the work that they promised to do. And then over time, these kind of behaviors can actually develop into procrastination because procrastination can actually be a form of stress relief. And that's because our bodies feel good if we put something off that's scary to start or that we're not sure how to start on it. And so a person feels some kind of level of, of relief um, so when people notice these behaviours, they can actually start to adopt them themselves. And this is where you can actually have a company culture um, developing. Um, another problem with procrastination is that leaders struggle to get their teams to either get work started or get work finished. Um, and they're spending time doing performance management, having additional one-to-ones than they'd normally have. And that's taking them away from working on business strategy and other um, kinds of activities that the leaders are responsible for. Um, and also it means that critical business projects can be behind. Um, that might be new product development. It was supposed to, product was supposed to come out within three years. It three becomes four becomes five. And there may be great reasons as to these delays, but there could be procrastination behind those reasons. Um, and also we can see sales growth being affected, particularly where there's a new, uh, there's a change in the way that somebody is doing business or a change in the company strategy. Um, and for some reason, the employees may feel like they're, they're, they're apprehensive to, to carry out those new activities. That can also lead to procrastination. Um, so um, we use coaching to help people with procrastination by firstly finding out why is the person procrastinating and coaching is one-to-one, one-to-one -one coaching that is confidential. So this is a confidential discussion between the coach and between the person, between the clients. So the person, the client would be able to open up and explain when they procrastinate, what they're worried about, what they're anticipating, what, they're, what they might be afraid of, what's stopping them. And that will help than, and enable the coach to work through with the client to understand, okay, we know now what you're dealing with, what you're telling yourself in your mind. Let's now challenge those blocks. Let's challenge that self-limiting belief. Perhaps it's a belief that actually isn't factual. Perhaps it's a fear about something that might happen in the future, but actually we don't know what's happening in the future. So why would we worry about it now? Um, instead, take positive action to find out the answers to prevent the potential problem that the person might be anticipating or fearful of in the future. So we'd work through and discuss how to remove these blocks. And then once the client had become comfortable and had had these breakthroughs um, and really understanding what's holding them back and actually how to overcome them, then the strategies to overcome them will be developed along with new habits and goals to be productive that are helpful, constructive, and replace unhelpful thoughts and behaviors that the client used to have. Let's have a look at another block, which is dealing with difficult people. So why is an inability to deal with difficult people a problem for your business? Well, it, it means that there, is, there can be a business impact of low productivity, and that's because there's time being spent trying to resolve the issues that arise when we have difficult people and difficult situations. And there can also be disruptive behavior, um, and that can be within groups, within teams, between teams. Uh, we've seen this kind of conflict um, within workplaces. Managers' time and resources can be drained dealing with the difficult people and the, difficult, the difficulties that then arise from those behaviours. And often managers are not trained or haven't had much training in how to resolve conflict. 
um, and you know it can be very stressful and have an impact on the manager. It might be that problems get resolved short term, um, but often problems don't go away long term. So they're still bubbling away in the background. There could be one or two people who might still be causing problems or being negative. We've seen this happen before um, and then problems resurface. Um, and so coaching can actually help the people who are involved, perhaps the employee that is difficult, understand what they're dealing with personally. What's, what is it that's making them behave in a way that they are becoming difficult, that they may be provoking confrontation, for example, they may be create, being desi divisive, you know, what is their motive? Um, and coaching actually helps understand what the root cause is. If difficult people and situations aren't dealt with, then it can, the problems can spread and the impact can actually move beyond the, the people and teams directly impacted. And it can affect people who may suffer from issues because of it and that may result in grievances which is a problem for employers and employees nobody wants for there to be people suffering within their organization it also could become uh, the problems could become a problem could become a, a organizational difficulty when employee engagement decreases job satisfaction can decrease it may become unpleasant an unpleasant work environment to work within and also the organization may struggle to retain or even lose good employees because they become fed up with the situation and we know as well that where there are problems within organizations where there might be people having grievance issues that we also would potentially also encounter legal compliance issues uh, meaning that where you have got a problem person and there is um, potentially unpleasant behavior happening or difficult behavior happening it could actually potentially morph into something whether intentional or not where somebody feels like they're being discriminated against so by bringing a coach in to really tackle the issues to coach the manager to support the manager so, and train the manager so that they can better handle what's happening and also to have one-to-ones with the employees who are involved. This is really, really helpful in terms of a mediation action and also um, generally um, to ensure the well-being of employees involved. Um, and it's really interesting because we talked about how productivity can be affected by difficult people and difficult situations. Um, and Actually, people management research reported that nearly 75% of leaders have witnessed employees are being paid to be at work, but they're not actually working. And part of that is due to distraction and disruption, discontent and low employee engagement. So potentially the root cause being difficult people um, and the clashes and conflicts that come with that. So as we've gone through two of the blocks, two of the symptoms that organisations and people feel the most in terms of our experience here at Clover Coaching, um, um, we hope that you have been able to have a good think about how coaching could help you, your organisation and the individuals within your organisation. And coaching may be new to some of you um, and it's, it's, it might be a concept that perhaps isn't widely understood. Um, and so what we would like to offer, we're offering a free 50 minute video call one to one coaching session within um, with one of the within one of the five blocks that we've talked about. Um, so think about yourself, your teams, people in your organization and think about the, the five different blocks you can see on the screen there. And if you are seeing this manifesting and if you would see value in bringing a coach in to support you to resolve these issues. So um, once you've decided that coaching might be or is for you and you would like to take us up on this offer, um, this is what you can expect. So clients can expect in one to one coaching to talk to confidentially to a trusted empathic coach such as myself to 
identify and understand their own blocks and develop those strategies to overcome them. And the client will be provided with the tools and techniques to use between sessions to achieve their weekly goals. So from the first session, we would expect that you would see some improvement already. It might be a light bulb moment where somebody realizes that actually what I'm telling myself every day isn't real. Why am I holding myself back? Or some other kind of mini breakthrough or realization. And so we really would recommend a package of five sessions spaced weekly apart if possible. Um, and that would be for the client, the person to really get positive progression and demonstrate organizational benefits. And the reason we say a weekly session is because between the sessions, uh, the client will have goals to work towards um, and will be testing uh, new behaviors, noticing and looking out for certain feelings and behaviors as they go about, since they've had realizations, as they go about their interactions with people, as they, um, as they um, spend time thinking about their lives, maybe journaling, et cetera. So these kinds of activities would be done between the sessions and the coach is the client's accountability partner to support and set the person, set the client up for success so that they can see the results, they can see the value, as will the organization see the value in the coaching sessions that they have with positive long lasting outcomes that could even greatly impact positively the person's life. So have a think about how coaching can help you and your organization. So think about what are your organization's needs that coaching can help with and think of a person or people, a case that would benefit from coaching to remove their blocks and be able to move forward. So contact us today um, to discuss your needs and book your free coaching session. You can see our contact numbers on the screen here. And um, we can also provide pricing uh, for courses of five sessions. And if you were to book multiple clients in within your organization as well. So we are now going to open up the lines to answer your questions. Um, please could you raise your hand or type into the chat any questions that you may have. If you would rather discuss on a one-to-one -one basis, then please reach out to us by phone and email. Um, our contact details were on the previous slide and these, this webinar will become available to you as a recording. We will share that to our YouTube channel and our social media. Um, and um, you will also be able to find our contact details on our website. So I am now unmuting the lines. Okay, well, um, we had, as I say, if you'd rather discuss on a one to one basis, then please reach out to us by phone and email. And we have had a couple of questions that came in beforehand that I'll answer now. Um, the first one is one of my sales managers is struggling and not performing as he's de demotivated by COVID. Could coaching help? Um, the answer to that question is absolutely because coaching will help the sales manager on a one-to-one -one confidential basis open it up so that the sales manager can explore exactly what are the reasons. Are they struggling and what are the reasons for that? And really, once those are understood, being able to work with those blocks, understand them better, challenge them, remove them, and then create helpful thought patterns and behaviors and habits that would replace those fears so that's one way that we can help that sales manager obviously coaching is so bespoke um 
we would obviously need to understand the person a lot better, but generally speaking, yes. Uh, we have another question, um, which is, we have an employee who's scared to return to work after furlough leave, who's anxious. What can be done to support her? Okay, so in this scenario, um, we would again have, have a one-to-one -one coaching session or series of, that's a series of sessions with the employee to understand what is what are her fears and where they come from. And really going back to the beginning and identifying um, what events happened to create that belief that has become a fear because the consequence means that they're not able, they don't feel they're able to return to work. And then working with the client on understanding the root causes and also helping the client to build on her resilience as well and create strategies to manage anxiety that work for her. And that's the kind of work that we do between sessions. Okay, so um, again, you can get in touch one to one if you'd like to ask any questions. Um, we've come to the end of the webinar now. Uh, please check out our social media. We've got some great videos and posts and you can also subscribe to our newsletter via our website. You can see the link here for more interesting content and resources to support you, your business and your people. We really value your feedback so we can continue to bring you interesting and valuable content and webinars. To help us do this, at the end of the webinar, you'll be asked to complete a very quick survey. It will appear on your screen and we'd be so grateful if you could take the time to complete it. Once again, thank you ever so much for joining us today. Uh, we really hope that you've enjoyed this web webinar. We'd love to hear from you and understand your thoughts on the webinar and also understand your uh, needs for coaching and also to take a part offer of the free coaching session. Many thanks for your time and have a great day. Thank you. Bye.